Tere tato Good evening. Green co-leader and violence protection minister Manama Davidson has walked back comments she made about white men causing violence. Davidson says she was in a state of shock when she said it, having just been hit by a motorbike at the Posey Parker protest. It comes as a former advisor to the Prime Minister calls for calm in the culture wars, warning we are heading down a path of polarisation. Here's political editor Jenna Lynch. Posey Parker protested, pelted, pushed out of town. By politicians too, Marama Davidson attended the counter-protest. As she was leaving, she says she was confronted by conspiracy theorist site Counterspin. So, yeah. And let rip on male violence. I am a prevention violence minister, and I know who causes violence in the world. It is white cis men. Yeah, oh, that wow. is oh. white cis men. Okay, but so who what is a woman? What is a... Cis male means a male who identifies as the same gender they were assigned at birth. Davidson criticised from all quarters. I don't think that was appropriate. I think it's a harmful generalisation on an entire group. She's clearly not up to the job. If she doesn't lose her job, no minister should lose their job. Because what's happened here is just inexcusable. In a statement, Marama Davidson walked back her comments, saying just before Counterspin started, quote, accosting her, she had been hit by a motorbike at the protest. She says, still in shock, I was not as clear in my comments as I should have been. I should have made clear that violence happens in every community. Um, she'd just been hit by a motorcycle. This is now an lousy excuse trying to explain her extreme views. Ministry of Justice data shows the ethnic breakdown of family violence convictions is 56% Māori and 35% European when it comes to sexual violence. It's 46% European and 29% Māori. But family violence advocate Jackie Clark says often Pākehā males don't show up in the stats because they're not reported. From her experience, 95% of the women she deals with have been harmed by Pākehā men. She said aloud... But everybody and I know the family violence field has been saying for a long, long time. Some of the protesters from Saturday were condemned by the PM for moving past free speech into physicality. I don't believe people should throw things at a protest, whether what they're throwing is a soup or a brick. The eruption over trans rights is not the only culture war concerning experts. Sir Peter Gluckman says we're heading on a path to polarisation. We need to get better. We need to find ways to have constructive, non-emotive or less emotive conversations. He says politicians must be more careful when engaging in left-right tit-for-tat politics. Our politics return and our discourse return to the centre. Otherwise we will fragment and we'll look like other countries that we do not want to emulate. A thought for everyone to mull as election season looms. Kia ora, Jenna. Are politicians expecting culture wars to seep into the election campaign? The Prime Minister said today he certainly hopes not, but looking at the political environment at the moment, it is potentially right for it, especially when you look at what's going on on social media. Our country's top spies even warned MPs today that anti-authority sentiment is not just an offshore program. Pro, uh, problem. It peaked here during the parliamentary protests last year and while it's dissipated it's not gone completely. They also said it had the potential to rise again ahead of the election. From the government and Labour's perspective what I understand they're thinking is that the intensity has come out of it since Jacinda Ardern uh, stepped down but with all of the proper political problems facing the country cost of living, healthcare, cyclone cleanup, climate change, the major parties will want to be focusing all of their energy on that, that of course does not stop minor parties desperate for oxygen, exploiting those tears in social cohesion for political gain, if they don't have anything constructive to add to the policy debate. Political editor, Jenna Lynch, Tenakwe.